Good morning, folks. We have four interesting stories to get to today on the atmosphere, the moon, distant space, and Earth's magnetic field. But we'll start with our star over at spaceweathernews.com. And we find the last day on the sun still holds the sunspots on the far side. The largest coronal holes have exited view, and surface shifting is about all we've got at the moment. The solar wind intensified overnight and into this morning. The second component of the coronal hole enhancement is here and is about as minor of an event as the previous one. Geomagnetic conditions affected at only minor levels. We did see a slight rise in plasma filament activity this morning as well, including the largest top left, which we saw in the yellow ionized iron view at the opening. Top quake of the day struck just a couple hours ago, another one well offshore and without damage risk. FYI, there was a database glitch overnight, and so if you saw what looked like hours without even a tiny shake on Earth, that was the glitch, fixed this morning. One of the paramount points of the near future is the spraying of the sky and the efforts to take the ongoing atmospheric experimentation to another level. The risks must not be ignored, and this is where the biologists have to get involved. They are here, sounding an alarm I'd guess most observers want to sound as well, especially because the sun, volcanoes, and Earth's natural cycle are demanding a drop in temperature the coming decades and century. If Captain Chemtrail, David Keith, and Billy Baphomet Gates get their way, we're all in big, big trouble. Moving on to the moon, Rainier Gamma, the lunar magnetic anomaly that looks almost like an eye with twisting tendrils around the sides. They have done a number of studies on the region and produced some of the coolest graphics with the data, and today, they are working to better describe the electrodynamics inflicted by the feature as it interacts with the solar wind. The actual effects on the tenuous lunar exosphere are negligible outside of a surface chemistry question, but where this gets interesting is the increased study of late on the electrodynamics of earthquakes and weather forcing, and with Earth's magnetic field tanking, it makes one wonder about the crustal magnetic anomalies that cover our entire planet. Up next, we're heading out to deep space where they found double quasars in what must be early galaxies merging. Quasars are the most powerful kinds of cosmic jets known in the universe. We see similar jets at baby stars, in nova events, and at highly active galaxies. We've got new examples of these dueling space swords in deep space today, courtesy of Hubble. And based on a conversation last night, they are literally spilling over in anticipation for ALMA, EHT, and eventually James Webb to look at some of these same things as well. Now last but not least, we're talking about Earth's magnetic field. The ongoing shift as the 12,000 year cycle is resetting now, and we're discussing its effects on Earth. But we're going to go a bit beyond the aurora and pretend we've got a super ship that can dive down into the mantle and all the way to the core. But that's where your imagination stops, because amidst the numerous similar presentations coming later this month at the EGU meeting, this one is probably worth the price of admission by itself. Geomagnetic jerks and the field behavior as a whole is not only related to the Earth's rotation, but the offset of the poles of the planet. The floodgates remain open on these topics as Earth's rapidly shifting field begins to turn our thinking on the tilt and rotation of the planet. We greatly appreciate your support. Our latest book is on this topic, The Next End of the World, available with a lot of cool other stuff at otf.cells.com. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 5.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.